Hi everybody. If you're looking to get out on the water this summer and enjoy a PWC, now is a great time to do so because for way less than $10,000, you can get out there and pick yourself up a brand new machine. So in this video, I'm gonna count down the most affordable personal watercraft from all three of the big brands. I will then tell you the differences and at the end of this video, I'll tell you which one I would buy with my own money. Let's begin by simply going over the most affordable model from the three major PWC brands. So if you go to Sea-Doo, you're gonna be looking at a Spark. If you go into a Yamaha dealership, you'll be looking at the EX series of Wave Runners. And then if you go talk to Kawasaki, they're gonna to wanna to sell you the STX 160. This STX is brand new for 2020, and it essentially replaces the old 15F, although that 15F model is still on sale through Kawasaki. Now, if you do go for an STX 160, you're looking at a base price of $9,599. After the sea Spark was brought out, Yamaha realized it needed to play in this rec light segment, and that is what the EX series is all about. The most affordable model they sell is going to run you $6,899. And finally, the cheapest brand new PWC in the United States and in Canada is the sea Spark. Now there's lots of differences we have to talk about and lots of reasons why the Spark is so affordable, but hey, you just can't argue with a starting price of $5,499 US. Yes, for under six grand, you can have a brand new sea in the States, and that is the cheapest PWC out there, but the story is not nearly that simple. So now let's start looking at these models and comparing all of the different features, and you'll understand what I mean. First up, passenger capacity, and this is a huge one, everybody, because that Spark model is the cheapest, but it also only carries two people. The base EX and the base Kawasaki model, they're both good for three people. So sure, you're saving money with the Sea-Doo, but you can only have two people on that thing, and the weight carrying capacity of the Sea-Doo is 352 pounds. Over at Yamaha with the base EX, the weight carrying capacity is 485 pounds, while if you go for the Kawasaki, your weight carrying capacity is 496 pounds. So sure the Sea-Doo is cheaper, but there's definitely a reason for it. Now the cheapest three-seat Sea-Doo Spark is going to set you back $6,699. But yes, that means that even the three seat model is still cheaper than that Yamaha EX. So it doesn't matter whether you go for the two seat Spark or the most basic three seat Spark, you'll still be getting the most affordable PWC in the US. Power is a huge consideration, of course, when you're looking at these machines. So let's go over the powertrains now, starting with that most affordable Spark. So if you go for that absolute base two up model, the powertrain is going to be an 899cc three cylinder engine, making just 60 horsepower. Now, luckily though, you can bump up and that thing makes 90 horsepower. Now, the interesting thing about the Spark is that if you move up to the three seat model, that larger model, you have to get the 90 horsepower engine. That 60 horsepower is only available in that smaller, lighter two seat model. But regardless, both of these sea are the least powerful of the group. Now let's move on to the Yamaha. So if you go over there and buy a Yamaha EX, you're gonna be coming home with a 1,049cc three-cylinder four-stroke engine that makes 100 
horsepower. So Yamaha is giving you more power right out of the gate, 40 more horsepower actually to be exact at the absolute base level. Now Yamaha also has a second level of power. If you step up into the EXR model, that is the most expensive model in the EX lineup, you're actually going to be getting about 10 extra horsepower up to 110. It's the same powertrain, you're just getting a little, you know, chip in there, a little ECU tuning to unleash a little extra horsepower out of that EXR model. Finally, the Jetski STX160, well, it's right there in the name. This thing makes 160 horsepower from an inline four cylinder engine. So the Kawasaki might be the most expensive, but in the absolute base model, I mean, compared to that sea Spark, you're getting an extra 100 horsepower. That is a massive difference. Let's follow up power with weight. Now, looking at the sea Spark, it might have the smallest power outputs, but it also has the lightest curb weight, ranging from 410 to 425 pounds for the heaviest models. That is still pretty scant. Now, moving up to that Yamaha EX, you're looking at a dry weight of about 570 eight pounds. Once again, you know, over 150 pounds more than that Sea-Doo model. So sure you're getting more horsepower, but you're adding on all of that poundage as well. Now, finally, looking at that jet ski, this thing is easily the heaviest model here coming in at 864 pounds. So again, 160 horsepower is great, but when you're pushing along 864 pounds, it's not as good. And you know what guys, I'm going to work out the power to weight ratios and you can see them right here. What about dimensions? Well, now let me go over how big these machines are. So that two seat Spark model is the smallest. It's only 110 inches long, 46.4 inches wide, and 41.1 inches tall. Now, if you move up to the three seat Spark, you're adding an extra 10 inches of length. So your total length is 120 inches. Now we move up to the Yamaha EX, and this thing is actually just a little longer than the Sea-Doo, but also a little Little bit skinnier than the CU. The EX is 123.2 inches long, 44 and a half inches wide, and 45.2 inches tall. That's definitely interesting. Finally, we have the jet ski, and this is the biggest model of the bunch, although not by a lot. Total length is 124.4 inches. That is the longest model here. Total width is 46.5 inches. That is the widest, but just barely. And then total height is 45 and a half inches. Reverse, in my opinion, is a really big deal these days on PWCs, and all three of these models offer it, but at different price points. So let's go over that right now. If you do go for a sea Spark, you have to get the 90 horsepower engine even to get reverse, uh, which means that the cheapest two-seat sea Spark with reverse comes in at $7,099. Now looking at the Yamaha, the base model EX does not have reverse, but you bump up by one model to the EX Sport, and then you get mechanical reverse, which is gonna cost you $7,899. Finally at Kawasaki, well, reverse is just built into the base model and is available all the way up throughout the range. The one final number I want to compare is the storage numbers. So looking at that CD Spark, it offers 7.41 gallons of storage. Moving over to the Yamaha EX, it actually offers a little bit more at 7.7 .7 gallons of storage. Looking at the Kawasaki storage area, guys, this model blows the other two out of the water, no pun intended. This thing has 35 gallons of storage. That is five times more than the competition. Now that we've run down all the important numbers to compare, let me talk to you about my feelings on these models. And first, I want to start with just the basic operation. Between Yamaha and sea -Doo, I'm not exactly sure which one is easier to operate because they're both intuitive. Having the twin lever setup really makes things easy. 
Now we have to get to the Kawasaki. This is where the STX really starts to feel kind of last generation and behind the times. Even in the most expensive model, you still only have a stick over here on your left hand side going from forward into reverse. So there's no neutral and there's still only one throttle lever up here. Whether you're in forward or reverse, the throttle will move you in that direction. But that also means there's no neutral on the Kawasaki. And maybe that seems like a little thing, but without a neutral, the second can you start that machine you're moving you're moving forward you're moving backwards you can never just sit in one spot and both the Yamaha and Sea-Doo have developed neutrals when you start those machines up you're in neutral the thing just sits there it's the most convenient I'm not sure why Kawasaki hasn't done that on this machine but considering the price point it just doesn't quite feel like the Cowie has the same level of technology as the other two let me now go through my experiences with all these three models and list to you the biggest pros and cons of each while you're out there riding. Now starting with that Kawasaki. If you're going for the Cowie, you're getting the most substantial feeling base model out there. This thing feels big and heavy and planted in the water, extremely stable for a base level model. Those are all definitely pros. I think the cons here, I already mentioned one, it's just the operation. Uh, you don't have that two lever setup. You still have a sort of a gear shift lever down here. There's no neutral, that's a bit of a bummer. The Yamaha EX, in my opinion, is kind of defined by its width. Let me explain. So first of all, this is the least stable of the three, easily. If you want stability, do not get a Yamaha EX. But I think the trade-off for that is the most fun, flickable, nimble handling out of this group. The EX gets pushed around a little bit less than the Sea-Doo does because it's a little bit heavier, but it's also skinnier, so you throw it into the corner and this thing just absolutely rotates. Uh, it doesn't bite that well. It doesn't feel like you're really down in the water. It feels like you're right on top of the water. And like I said, when it comes to just kind of straight up handling and cornering, I do think the EX uh, not only turns the best, but just feels the best while doing it. Now let's dive into that sea Spark, and this is a bit of a tricky one because there are different flavors of Spark. Now I have never personally ridden that basic 2-up 60 horsepower model. I've been on a 3-up 90 horse and then the Spark Trix, and we'll get back to that Trix model in a second because that's a unique proposition in the rec light segment. Now when we're just talking about the 90 horsepower 3-up Spark, there's no doubt that this machine just feels cheap. It just feels cheaper than the other two it does. The, the plastic, uh, even just the way it sounds with the water hitting it feels different. So at the end of the day, the Spark almost comes across more like a toy. The other two machines are more serious. The Spark is just pure toy. If the fun factor is what you're chasing, you should probably buy a Spark Trix. The Trix has a variable trim system which can set the jet higher or lower than on the regular Spark model. Now that's going to lift your nose right up or push it way, way down. And let me tell you guys, you can see me doing them here. These water wheelies are so fun. There's actually a set of foot rests right at the back of the machine so you can stand up comfortably while doing them. And you know what? You do not have to be an experienced rider to do this. I think that's my favorite part of the Spark Trix. You can get on for the first time and pull a water wheelie. This thing makes you feel like an absolute hero. Now if we are simply talking the most fun for the least amount of dollars out of all of these machines, I do think I would probably recommend the Spark Trix. This thing is just a barrel of laughs for what it costs. Oh yeah, what does it cost? $7,000. $599 in the US if you go for one of these Trix models. Now that you've got all that info, let me tell you that if it was my money, I would be coming home from the Yamaha dealership. I just really believe that the EX here is the bowl of porridge that is just right. The Kawasaki is expensive and large and heavy and it has the most storage, sure, but the technology feels like it's behind the times. On the flip side, the Sea-Doo is very lightweight, very affordable, 
but it also comes across feeling cheap, kind of like a toy. The Yamaha is right there in the middle. This thing offers intuitive user controls, fun, exciting handling, and really good build quality, all at a middle of the road price. So for all of those reasons, I would be bringing home a Yamaha EX if I had to buy a Rec Lite PWC. So guys, that's it for this video. Now, of course, I want to hear from you. Go below, do you own one of these models? Please let me know, let me know what you like about it. Let me know which one you would buy. And then of course, when you're done, do not forget to hit like, hit subscribe, and then come right back here to the channel for the latest news views and real world reviews. See ya.